Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Just finished doing a review of the new topping uh, D30 Pro DAC and posted to the forum, but I thought I'd also do a quick video on it. This is what the box looks like. Uh, it's typical of topping, very well built, quite solid, uh, beautiful display. I have a soft spot for these uh, orange LEDs. Um, pretty functional, you know, usual rotary uh, rotary uh, encoder. Um, comes with a remote, uh, standard remote from a lot of Chinese companies. Um, the back, what's unusual about this little uh, deck is that it has balanced output. Usually in this size and configuration, we get uh, just RCA outs. Um, we have the usual coax and, and optical and uh, USB inputs, of course. Uh, another nice thing is the mains input uh, power supply is built in, so you don't have a wall work to uh, sit outside and uh, take up space. And uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the measurements on this. Let me switch the buzzer. You see the giveaway rating I've already <laughs> given to the uh, topping, but uh, let's go through the uh, performance. Um, Usually we all zoom in and look at this area, which is the SINAD score. SINAD is the sum of the noise and distortion, and then you take a ratio of that relative to the signal itself. In this case, the signal itself is a one kilohertz tone, as you see over here. I've set it to zero on top uh, in this FFT display. And this is 119 is saying if you add the noise and distortion together, everything is uh, 119 or 120 dB below reference. Um, best case threshold of hearing is about 115 dB. So this is five dB better than absolute transparency. Um, there's no way, no how you could hear the noise or the distortion from the stack. So it's absolutely uh, transparent. And then furthermore, distortion, which can be more objectionable than noise, is down at minus 130 dB, 135 dB. You can see minus 130 here, and the first spike, the second harmonic is way down here. It's just incredible how good these DACs have gotten um, in the last year, year and a half. Uh, this used to be unattainable, even state-of-the-art DACs just two years ago. But here we are. The balance output puts out a little bit over four volts. I like to always see at least four volts in there, and uh, they've uh, eked out a little bit more than four volts out of it. Um, with this, uh, you know, my massive ranking of 100, I don't know, 250, 300 DAX that I've tested, it ranks way up there. So if we zoom in, we see there's number 11, although the difference between number 11 and number one is just two dBs. Um, so this is really not significant. Uh, just showing you the, sort of this rivalry that's going on between companies to try to beat each other at this game. But to be this good with uh, what is basically a low cost stack is just incredible. Uh, some of you don't have balanced output. Uh, shame on you. <laughs> or balanced input, I should say, on your rest of electronics. I'd love to see a system that's end-to-end -end balanced because that lowers the chance of getting ground loops, which are quite nasty. And once you have them, they're tough to get rid of. And um, But if you don't have it, you just have RCA output to your powered speaker or downstream preamp or headphone deck, uh, headphone amplifier. Um, performance is almost as good. You just lose a dB or so. And... Uh, uh, of course, the output is not two volts, as you would expect, for unbalanced connection. Uh, dynamic range is uh, 128 dB, um, which means this is a difference between basically a very low ampl amplitude signal and a max, and telling you that you get more than 21 bits of dynamic range. Now, you might think, oh, I've got 24-bit uh, music. This must not be very good. Turns out it's just physically impossible to do much better than this. Uh, room temperature, even a single resistor could produce more noise than this. So 20 watt one bits is just incredibly good. Um, CD, of course, is 16 bits. So this, you have five extra bits of headroom over here. So quite excellent. Um, another test we run is that this intermodulation distortion. This is a, a 60 hertz and seven kilohertz, two tones and they have a four to one ratio. And then we measure the distortion that's generated between these two tones. And um, 
we sweep these from very low level to all the way to the maximum. So at very low level, um, noise dominates. That's where these curves always sort of point down, uh, scale down. Uh, at some point, distortion picks up, as you can see this in this little phone dongle, uh, and then distortion dominates when the curve flattens and goes up. Um, with the D30 Pro, it basically is all noise limited distortion. It's just not an issue, and it just sinks lower and lower. This is a, a topping a DX3 Pro, the little brother to this one that's been out for a year and a half or so. And you can see the performance gap is just incredible uh, relative to that. These are very hard uh, improvements to get when you already have a good deck. Um, another test I run is called linearity. Uh, it's a single tone and we filter out everything outside of the tone. So we're just looking for the accuracy of that voltage. We ask the DAC to produce X. In digital domain, we expect it to produce the same in analog domain and we keep increasing it you know, one bit at a time and the two have to track. If they track perfectly, you get a horizontal line and that's basically what we have in here. A little wiggleness you're gonna get because a little bit of noise gets in the way. Uh, this is exceptional. Something you don't see in the static test is that when I run this on some other DACs, there's enough noise in there that the analyzer struggles to capture these uh, samples. Here, they're so accurate and so noise-free that it just was a flat line and ran very quickly, which is exceptional. The next test I run uh, is for everybody else, not me. I'm not uh, too worried about how the DAC filters work. They tend to not be having much audible effect, except for when you use this one, blue one, which is basically no filtering. You want to avoid that. But all the other filters are plotted. I always like the ones that attenuate the most. And here we can see this one in uh, or whatever color it is uh, on a monitor. Uh, it has the most attenuation, which is what you want. And uh, now uh, most of these uh, filters are not mathematically correct. And this one's one of them, unfortunately, is quite common. This is a 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate, which is same as CD and most of the streaming content. So you want half of that to have all the signal chopped off. And the half of that would be where this cursor line in red is. Uh, we don't have that. It takes its time and goes down at 24 kilohertz. This is very common. Uh, it's a function of what the chip company provides. These, uh, so there's not much topping can do about it. Um, and in, in reality, the effect is very minor because uh, your music's not going to have a lot of spectrum between 20 and 22 kilohertz for it to uh, mirror out. So would be nice if it was sharper, but again, this is very typical. And uh, once there, I want to see very good attenuation, which this DAC has. Some DACs or some AVRs, uh, the DACs in them, you know, only go to minus 70 or so. Uh, whereas this, you can see, is almost down to minus, minus 110, which is great. Um, this test was an exception. Uh, this is a $99 board that I tested a long time ago that I use as reference in blue. And surprisingly, a DAC this good all of a sudden shows far higher uh, noise and distortion summed together. THT plus N. Uh, THT stands for harmonic distortion and N stands for noise. So we can see there's a lot worse, but this test is actually kind of tricky in that to capture all the harmonic distortion, um, we need to have wide bandwidth for our test. Uh, the test signal goes up to 20 kilohertz, so its second harmonic uh, distortion would be at 40 kilohertz already. Third harmonic would be 60 and so forth. So from beginning, I've set this test to have 90 kilohertz bandwidth, so you can capture up to a fourth harmonic of 20 kilohertz. The problem doing that is that it then captures a lot of things that are in ultrasonic domain that are not very audible, but show up in here and, and you know, I say worries the eye. And so we have to see if it should worry the ear or, uh, at the same time. So I then run a spectrum test so we can see what's above our, uh, you know, 20 kilohertz bandwidth that we used for the previous test. And we see that the noise is very low, actually, and so is distortion. Distortion is down to minus 135, so quite a bit lower than what we saw in the previous test. But right around 45 kilohertz, all of a sudden, it takes off. The reason for that is the special signal processing technique that's used to reduce noise in the audible band by pushing it out into the ultrasonic band. Um, this is called noise shaping. Uh, it's a difficult concept for you to understand. Perhaps just take my word for it that you can sort of 
take things from one uh, pocket, if you will, and put it in the other pocket, that doesn't matter as much. So, um, and this kind of noise is so low at minus 110 dB, and it's not gonna make it to your Twitter or your headphones, and you're certainly not gonna hear it. So it's just a measurement artifact of having to uh, increase bandwidth to capture this, so it captures stuff that is not an issue. Uh, now, if this problem was way down here, then we'd worry about it, but, but where it is, it's just not a concern. Um, the uh, next test is what I call jitter test. It's a special sig signal called the J-test, and um, I won't go into it now, but essentially think of it as a pure 12 kilohertz tone and nothing else. So the most perfect result would be this one spike in the middle, and then these two shoulders would, would not even be seen. Um, in this case, we see the shoulders way down here, so low that it's actually hiding on the audio science review logo here. Uh, so that's exceptionally low noise floor. We see tiny little ticks in here down to minus 150 dB or so. Um, some of them are power supply related, usually go up a little bit more. But again, we're talking minus 140 dB. Remember our set threshold of hearing is minus 115. So these are just absolutely not a audible concern. Now, typically when I run this test, especially on, on DACs that use the AKM chip uh, that doesn't have a resampler, uh, the uh, coax and toss link inputs tend to do a lot worse than USB. Uh, hopefully most of you are using USB, but sometimes you have a TV with toss link output and, uh, or a game console, what have you. So people care about that also. And here we see that the performance is identical on all three. So either has extremely good clock generation and extraction out of uh, tossing and coax or is resampling internally and throwing out all the input jitter. Uh, I don't know which, but either way, uh, it's excellent result and it's just very, very nice to see uh, such good performance. Finally, it is a multi-tone test. Uh, a lot of people like this. Uh, visually, uh, kind of an <laughs> attractive test in that we take 32 tones. You can see their levels here and uh, run them through the DAC digitally and ask it to produce an analog output. And whatever shows up in between these bands is intermodulation distortion. And uh, an ideal DAC would have infinite troughs over here and uh, nothing in between them. Uh, in practice, we get noise from both the DAC and my analyzer, and uh, we see that the uh, the worst case noise is 100 uh, uh, distortion noise is minus 120, which is 20 bits already, and then it sinks way down to uh, almost uh, 135 dB. So that's exceptional performance for any DAC, uh, let alone uh, a bargain DAC. So NetNet is another superb product from Topping. Uh, some people say I'm, I'm in their pocket for some reason. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's no mystery in here. This is the uh, manual that came with, with this stack. And, uh, you know, if you, you look at it, hopefully uh, it's the case with this one. Yeah, look at the uh, all the measurements in there. <laughs> this looks surprisingly like mine. What does that mean? The company has a proper audio analyzer like my audio precision there. During the design, and uh, they uh, measure the performance and they find problems and they fix them. Uh, other companies wait to, uh, for me to find them the first time because they haven't done their job. Uh, oftentimes the fixes are simple. You may have to just adjust the component, move something around, uh, isolate something to get rid of noise. Uh, none of that costs money but you need to have the tools to tell you that. You can't use your ears when the distortions are so low and noise levels are so low, they're way beyond threshold of hearing. So you wanna you know, do that in design phase. And when you do that, then you, got, you have a great product and uh, my job's easy. I'm just basically confirming independently what they've done and performance is this good. So there's, uh, you know, no, nothing else is needed over here as far as trickery or what have you. Just build a great product and you get my praise for it. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is my uh, first video on YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.